It is time for your favorite Android podcast from the crew of BlindAndroidUsers.com. Kick back and enjoy another fine episode from these Google fanboys as they navigate Android from a blindness perspective. And now, here are your hosts. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 58 of the Blind Android Users podcast. I'm Ed Green, and I'm joined this week by Warren Carr, Austin Pinto, and Fee Dunn. And we're coming to you on Saturday, January the 15th, 2022. We've got a busy show for you this week. We have the usual announcements from Austin. We then turn to our next must-have apps category. And this week, it's all about money, money, money. It's those finance apps. In our spotlight section, we interview Sylvia Van Oos, developer of the Raise to Answer app. We then have an app of the week from Karine Kuan, and that's ADB App Control. And we close with highlights from Talkback with Warren. Good evening, everyone. How are we all? Austin, how are you? I'm doing good. Mumbai is nice and cold still. No weather, sudden weather changes, although yesterday was a very important festival, the kite flying festival and harvest festival. So now the winters is going to become less so it's my not so favorite season the summer season is going to start in some days or months i don't like the season now no it's gonna get hot fee how are you uh not bad thanks nice and warm in my flat but i went for a walk and it was cold and foggy and yucky so um yeah winter So as far as I'm concerned, I'd quite like spring and summer, but then I'm not living in India where it gets really, really hot. So, um, yeah, but no, it's been a good week. I was actually on the radio this week. So you're talking to a celebrity. No, <laughs> we certainly are. Yes. Check out Fee on In Touch. The podcast should be available worldwide. Uh, yep. It's a BBC podcast. You're talking all about books, aren't you? That's right. Audio books. We each picked yeah. one. So that was exciting. Brilliant. Yeah, go check that out, folks. Warren, you're a bit under the weather, aren't you? I have been, and I'm not sure if this the dreaded C word going on here, but my wife had something, and she's been out of school for a few days because they wanted her to do a 72-hour test, and um, that result should come in sometime today, right around noon, if they keep to their promise, and then we'll know whether it's just a common cold or... It's a dreaded sea thing. And so I'm kind of having a little bit of a symptom, but not like hers. I don't have those chills and fevers and all of that. But then a little nagging headache that I wish someone could take my head off. <laughs> well, let's hope let's hope your wife's COVID test comes back negative and it is is just a cold. Hopefully or, or flu or something with, with chills and fever. Maybe I hope so. may, maybe it will. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Austin, let's look at our announcements then. What have we got? This week in the announcement section, it's the last chance to register for the webinar by VoxMed. So please do that. It's on the 19th of January. The next announcement is our YouTube channel has seen us some extreme growth now. We are at 540 subscribers and we have almost reached 50,000 plays on our YouTube and audio podcast combined. So keep that growth coming and we need some nice growth and some another at least 460 more subscribers to reach 1,000. I hope we can do it this year. What's that? 50,000 plays, is that? 5-0, eh? Yeah, yeah, 5-0. Yeah, that's not bad. That's a lot. And frankly, we thank you guys for patronizing us. That's absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. If you patronize us, uh, I promise particularly for Commonwealth and American citizens to patronize you whenever you have Independence Day. Oh, my. Yeah. If I don't do it sufficiently already, oh I, shall, I shall carry on doing I'm it. I'm not today. saying anything. <laughs> it's okay. I'll say plenty. Okay. All right. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Don't listen to Ed. Do you listen to Ed? <laughs> And then write in and complain. Well, now we'll turn to our next in our must-have apps category. And it's all about finance this week, all about Luca. Uh, So I'm going to, first of all, hand over to Warren to talk about this section and the demos he's going to bring us. 
money. That's the word. Money, 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 as you said, Ed. And of course, we need finances. We need to organize those finances. And our world is not the same like it used to be, you know. We don't go to the bank and stand in line like we used to. I'll never forget those days. I'll be standing there. And back in Denver, there was a special window for people with disabilities. So I was treated like a king. Well, now those days are a little bit behind us unless there's something that one really needs to go in and sign for or anything like that, we manage those finances right online, don't we? And so today we're talking about some of the apps that we're using, and I'll be talking about a couple apps. The first one that I'm talking about is the GPay, Google Pay. And that is my first one up, and here is my demonstration of GPay. This is demonstrating Google Pay, otherwise known as GPay. In this demonstration, I'll be using my Pixel 5a running Android 12 and TalkBack 12.1. For speech services, I am employing the Google Speech Services. I am on my home screen now, and what I will do is to invoke GPay, either by saying the magic word and asking it to open up GPay, or simply swiping down with two fingers from the top of the screen and tapping GPay found just above the first notification found in the notification shade. A swiping down with two fingers reveals the notification center, and just above that we have the last line of items from within the quick panel. I will now swipe down with two fingers and revealing that notification shade and finding and tapping on GPay to the top left above the notification shade. Here I go. Notification shade. I'll put my finger down and find GPay. GPay, four bullet 19, wallet. Close. Button. I put my finger down and it says GPay four bullet one nine dot dot dot. Those are the last digits of my card. And at the very top left corner, we have the close. Of course, if I tap there, it will close down the app. Below that, in the middle, it talks about my card. If I put my finger down, pay with Rumble. It says, pay Message. with Rumble. Rumble is the nickname I give to my card. You can give your card a nickname, and so mine is called Rumble, R-U-M-B-L-E. At the bottom of the screen is a button that says, Show All button out of list. Show All. Tapping here will take us to a screen where we could manage other cards that I have in here already. But as of now, Rumble is my default. But if I go in here by tapping on Show All, I could choose a different card that I have here in my account and set that as my default for GPay or add a new card for that Message. matter if that is what I wanted to do. I will now tap on Show All. Show all button. Google Pay. Open navigation menu button. Showing items one to two of two. Tapping on show all, the first thing we landed on is the open menu found near the top left corner of the screen. We'll be coming to that, but we have two items here, and these two items have to be items that I have besides my rumble. And it could include things like cards from the stores or, you know, things like that. Let's see what I have. Choice hotels, choice privileges, one of two, in list, two items. I have choice hotels here. Sears brands, shop your way, two of two. I even have Sears here. Now, at the bottom of that, we have... Add a card, button, out of list. Add a card, and here's where we can go in to add a card, whether it's a debit card, a credit card, or some sort of some loyalty card and all of that. You could add those to your Google Pay. As a matter of fact, you could even add passes to this if that's what you wanted. We'll come back to that, but I want to go back to the first item on the top left corner, which is that 
open menu because there are a lot of things here that we could look at. I'll now put my finger down and find and tap on that open menu on the top left corner of the phone. Open navigation menu button. Open navigation. Menu. Google Pay image. I am now in the navigation menu, and I want to show you the things that we have here. Some we may look at, and some you can look at by yourself. Tapping on that, here are the items that we find. Payment methods in list. We have payment methods. If I tap here. Google Pay. Back button out of list. Showing items 1 to 8 of 8. I am being told that there are a total of eight items in here. I'll put my finger down and go through those items that we found in the payment methods. In other words, I could choose either of these things found here among the eight items and make it my default payment method. Here are the items that we find. PayPal enable contactless. There's PayPal. MX4 bullet. My American Express card. Google Play balance. Google Play Balance. Visa 4 Bullet 7. My Visa card. Rumble is your default. Rumble, which is my default, that's my debit card. Google Store Finance. Google Store Credit Card. Credit or Debit Card. And the last item at the bottom is Credit or Debit Card. Tapping on that will take me to where I could add a card. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Google Pay. Choose a card to set up. You can choose a card that's already saved in your wallet, add a new one, or add PayPal in list. So here, I could choose any of those cards that we saw earlier, and they reappear here. So I could choose either my Amex, or my Visa card, or any of the other cards, or add a new card. I'll show you what I'm talking about. PayPal. Enable contact list. PayPal. Amex 4 Bullet Amex, Visa 4 Bullet Visa, 7, PayPal, PayPal your, credit, or debit card. credit or Debit Card. Now that's the one that if I tap on, it will automatically open up the camera so that I could simply capture the number of the card and add it that way, or I could choose to manually add it. I'll show you what I'm talking about by tapping here. Flash Auto button out of list. Tapping on that automatically opens up my camera and says, you know, flash is auto. That means I could put my card down and it will capture my card. Because if I put my finger down, listen to what it says. Add a card. Align your card to this frame and tap to focus. So you align your card and tap to focus or at the bottom I could... Enter details manually button. Add details manually, which means if I tap here, I'll be adding those info manually, things like the card number, expiration date, and all of that. I'll now go back. Google Pay. Credit or debit card in list. And I want to go tap on the menu again. Open navigation drawer. Open navigation menu button. Menu. Google Pay image. So the first one we saw in the navigational drawer was the payment methods. The next item that we have below that. Participating banks. Participating banks. You could tap here to see if your bank is one of those banks that has partnership with GPay. The next item below that we have. Activity. Activity. Here you could see your activities, things that you've used the GPay for and things like that. Next item. Settings. Settings. Let's quickly go into the settings here and see what we have. Here you could turn things on or off. Settings. Back button out of list. We are now in the settings and here are the items that we find within the settings. Email updates, get exclusive offers, tips and invites to give feedback, switch on. Email Next. updates. Gmail imports, connect to Gmail for automatic access to things like loyalty cards, tickets and offers sent to your inbox, switch on. Gmail Next. Imports. Edit account info, update your name, address or other account info. Next. Edit, 
Personalization within Google Pay, for example, get offers from stores where you shop and recommendations for ways to save, switch, on. Purchase notifications, see transaction details after you make a purchase, switch, on. Next. Updates about your passes, stay up to date on your events and flights, and find out when your saved offers are about to expire, switch, on. Offers and tips, hear about rewards and discounts relevant to you, and learn how to get the most out of the app, switch, on. And that's Offers the last item within that settings. I will now go back. Google Pay. Going the back takes me back to the main menu, and I need to tap on the navigation drawer again. Menu. So the last item that we saw in the navigational drawer was the settings. Now below that settings, we have the following. Contactless setup. This takes you to where you could set up your contactless method of payment. And if you go in here, if you already have one, then you will see what you have. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Close button out of list. We have the close near the top left corner. And if I put my finger down. You're all set to pay with your phone heading. And. You've added a card, use it to pay with your phone, in apps, and online, in list. And? You've set a screen lock, your phone must be unlocked to pay. And the last item here? Your phone meets security requirements. And tells me my phone meets security requirements. I'll now either go back or tap on the close near the top left corner. Close button. Google Pay. Open navigation menu, button. And I'm back to the menu UI where I need to tap on that navigational drawer again. And here I go. Menu. So the last item that we saw was the contactless payment. And below that we have. Help and support. Got help and support. Send feedback. Send feedback. Google Pay privacy policy and terms. And that's the last item. That's all we have in the simplistic. GPay. And now you go on and set up that GPay. Next up, I have the PayPal. And PayPal is something that a lot of us use. You know, we use it in stores, we use it in paying pals and things like that. And so my next demonstration is the ever popular PayPal. And here is PayPal. This is demonstrating PayPal. I'll be demonstrating the PayPal app. PayPal has become one of those apps that one can't really do without. We use PayPal in doing all kinds of things, like shopping online, making payments, or whatever the case may be, including sending money to friends or paying for goods and services. In demonstrating the PayPal app, I'll be doing that on my Pixel 5a running Android 12 and TalkBack 12.1. I am on my home screen and I could simply invoke the assistant and bring up the PayPal app or go to my folder called Money and find and tab on PayPal. I think I'm going to choose the lazy way of asking the assistant to bring up PayPal. So I'll now double tab on the back of my phone to invoke the assistant. Open PayPal. Fingerprint for PayPal. Tap to cancel authentication button. I have set my PayPal to use my fingerprint, and so it's asking for my fingerprint. Authenticated. PayPal. Navigate up button. Now that I'm in PayPal, because I have 2FA two-factor authentication, it will need to send me a text message with a code. Get your one-time code. So I need to have that OTP sent to me. So now I'll tab on continue. Continue. Button. Message 700. There we go. And it sends me my authentication and I'll tab on copy. Copy. 482. Code copied. Navigate up. Button. There we go. So there is my code. And now I'll put my finger down on the edit field tab there and have the autofill fill it. Edit box. And now on my keyboard, above my keyboard, we'll have that authentication code that was sent to me. G2. 
I tap on that, it auto fills it, and now I'll tap on continue. Continue. PayPal. Send. Profile button. Showing there we go. One. I am now in my PayPal. I'll now show you the UI of PayPal, and from the top left corner, we have Profile button out of list. The first item on the top left corner is Profile, where you could tap in here and see your profile. And then to the top right corner, going right, we've got a couple items. The first one is Rewards button. You can go in here and see your rewards, and QR code button. QR code. Below that it says Rewards $24.19 PayPal ba We have PayPal balance and then below that we'll have the names of people that we've transacted with and or people that have sent us money. I'm not going to reveal people's names and things like that here so I'm skipping over that. And below the names of the people that we've transacted with we have at the bottom some tabs. And the tabs at the bottom that we have are starting from the left. Dashboard tab selected one of five in list five items. We've got dashboard. Finances tab two of five. Finances. Payments tab three of five. Payments. Deals tab four of five. Deals and. Wallet tab five of five in list five items. And the last one is wallet. Let's talk about what these tabs do. We are already sitting here on the wallet, and so we might as well start here with the wallet. Here, when you tab on wallet, it's going to show all the payment methods that you have in your account. I'll tab here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Wallet tab selected one of three in list three items. When you tap on that wallet, you have three items, including the wallet itself. On the top left corner, you have wallet. Wallet tab selected one of three. To the right of that, you have. Rewards tab two of three. Rewards, rewards. if you have any rewards. And then to the right of that. Activity tab three of three. Activity. Activity. Now, below that, we have things like. Wells Fargo. Ch I have my bank. Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo. Discover. Cr Discover card. Flex perks. Flex perks. That's from my Visa card. Explore more from PayPal. Heading out of list. And below that, there's an explore more, and you could do things like. Get your PayPal cash card. Shop and get cash from your PayPal account with a debit card in list. And. Add cash at stores. Add cash at thousands of stores and use it to shop online. And. Add cash. Cash a check, snap a pick and cash your check right in the app. Set up direct deposit, get paid up to two days early. Learn. Apply for PayPal credit, subject to credit approval. Up. Loyalty cards, heading, out of list. And then we have Show the loyalty. To five of Link a loyalty card. Add loyalty cards, apply loyalty cards in store with a quick scan of your PayPal app when you check out. In Preferences, heading, out of list. Then the preferences, preferences, heading. Online purchases, Wells Fargo, checking for QR code purchases. Automatic payments. Google Pay. And that's the last item. That was wallet, and now I'm going left. The next tab we come across is deals. Deals, tab, four of five. Let's tab here. Deals, out of list. Tapping on deals, here's what we got. Starting from the top. Category image, home and furniture. So we have things like home and furniture. Category image, industrial and scientific. Category image, jewelry and watches. Category image, luggage. Movies and TV, movies and TV. Category image, music. You have the idea. So let's go to the next tab. And this was deals. So in other words, you could buy those things right here from PayPal. Now I'll go to the next tab, and that would be Payments, tab, three of five. Payments. Let's tap on Payments. Send, tab, selected, one of four, in list, four items. Upon tapping on Payments, we have some tabs near the top. I think we have four tabs. From the top left corner, we've got Send, tab, selected, one of four. You have Send, that's the one that 
uh, people we've sent money to. To the right of that, we have bills tab two of four. Bills going right. Give tab three of four. Gift Give. and request tab four of four. Request. You request. could request that person to send you that money if they're kind of holding it down or not sending it to you on time, you could gently remind them, hey, I'm still waiting on that payment. All right, that was payment. The next item we go to is... Finances, tab two of five, enlist five items. Finances, let's tab here. F crypto, tab selected, one of two, enlist two items. Tapping on finances, we have two items. The first item says crypto, which is selected by default. And then to the right of that, we have savings tab two of two savings. savings. You could even have a savings here on PayPal. Those are the items we have in that finance. The last item on the left is the default that happens when you open up PayPal. And that will be your dashboard, basically showing you your activity or things like that. I'll tap on dashboard, dashboard. Tab one of dashboard selected showing items one. And here you could see the people you've sent money to. You could see your PayPal balance. You scroll down. You'll see things like congrats. You're selected to apply subject to credit approval and things like that. And then, you know, the payments you've made. Disney plus minus seven. See this Disney there. eBay. eBay. eBay minus one. Another eBay. So my things that's five. my dashboard and those are the places i've sent money to and things like that now the next thing we want to talk about is the profile found near the top left corner profile but when you tap on profile here are the items we find update profile photo out of list we have update photo then your name and then invite friends invite in friends account info account info Personal profile, message center, login and security, data and privacy, notification preferences, marketing preferences, help, log out, legal agreements. And that's the last item. That's your PayPal quick overview. Thanks, Warren. I, I love both of those apps for different reasons. Uh, Google Pay. It's a wonderful way to pay for things, in my view, if your bank supports it, because we obviously can't read what's on card terminals. And, you know, 99.9999999% of shop assistants will be honest. But, uh, you know, Google Pay, if you use that, you will immediately be able to see uh, what your transaction was. Sometimes card transactions take a little while to update in your banking app. They might show as pending, possibly, depending on the app, but it can be two or three days before the merchant bills you. So Google Pay will give you an instant uh, notification of um, what you've paid. The other reason Google Pay is really good, um, I don't know if this is reflective of the rest of the world, but in the UK, you're increasingly starting to get touchscreen chip and pin terminals, which some of them may be accessible, but if they are, the establishment might not know how to turn on that accessibility, and some of them just straight up might not be accessible at all. So if your bill is in the contactless limit or the staff can break it down into chunks so that each of them is contactless, then, you know, Google Pay is an accessible way to pay using your phone. Um, my, my other tip, not, not really on Android, by the way, but if, if for some reason that's not possible and you find yourself faced with a touchscreen terminal, just get the establishment to put it through as a customer not present and they'll key in the 16-digit card number. But, uh, yeah, uh, so for, for touchscreen terminals in particular uh, and, and, and for knowing what we've spent, then I, th I think Google Pay is great. And where we've spent it as well. <laughs> yeah, that's that to you. Because I've sometimes gone to a, a random coffee shop or something in a new area, just thinking, oh, I'm waiting for somebody. Uh, I'll, and it, maybe it's raining or something. I'll go in here. Um, and then if it's quite, it, it, either if it's terrible and you never want to go there again, or if it's really good and you do want to go there again, you can find out the name. 
so you know afterwards if you forgot to ask the people what it was called that's com- quite handy um with google pay um is there a limit of the amount you can pay because i know with apple pay you can actually pay quite high amounts of money higher than the normal contactless limit it's similar and and it's also not particularly transparent as to what the limit is it is similar to apple pay though in that the contactless limit is usually lower than the google pay app limit i don't know what drives the google pay app limit it's not the app itself though Uh, i think it must be something either to do with the terminal or the establishment you're in but it but it is higher than the contactless limit and it also depends, you know, it depends on your bank as to how much you can take out. Uh, but the thing that I really like about GPay is the fact that when you do these transactions, it's actually not your actual card number that gets transmitted. So you are protected, and that's why I love it. I just remember I was traveling through London. And, you know, as a blind kid, I was able to use that thing. And it was just a beautiful thing. It's like pie. So I like it. No, it's good. I like and, and PayPal as well. For you talked about having um, uh, access to company names on Google Pay, but but PayPal stores my transactions forever. Uh, I, I lost my eBay account um, ages ago, and, and and I scrolled down, and PayPal had all my transactions going back to two thousand and two. Oh wow! Oh my! Which is insane. <laughs> um, I don't know if it still does. This did is you, like twenty fifteen. Ed, did you find it again? I mean, was it was it down the back of the sofa? Well, no. Annoyingly, <laughs> eBay seems to close your account if you don't use it for ages. And I don't use. I go through stretches of not using eBay, and you just lose all your feedback if you don't use it regularly. It's like you never That's existed. Very annoying. It is very annoying. Uh, you can't it, reactivate yeah. it or anything. No, you start from scratch. Uh, I, wow. I, 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 I rediscovered myself through PayPal, and then tried to set it back up, and just wouldn't do it. <laughs> it was like I never well. existed. That is oh. annoying. Because <laughs> yes, it, it's, it's quite important because sometimes sellers won't sell to you if you don't have a rating and buyers don't want to buy from you, obviously. So, uh, yeah, I wasn't happy. Exactly. Never mind. I use eBay a lot and I get all those eBay bucks. So sometimes I have up to like $20, just a break from eBay. So I'm an eBayer. The reason I like uh, GPay and PayPal is because uh, GPay is simplistic and lots of offers and deals you get after using GPay, you can even invite your friends and earn some money. So I like that feature of both the apps. I like PayPal because it supports purchasing cryptocurrency. And I think this is a good time. Maybe just wait for some more little days, but it will be a good time to invest in Bitcoin because the rates have fallen. So do your research and uh, if, if you want to invest then you can invest in bitcoin don't invest a lot of money just invest what you can afford to lose in case something happens to the worst to cryptocurrency although nothing will happen but still so i like these both apps and in india it depends on the limits of using gpay and paypal some banks have uh, 25,000 rupees limit. Some banks have 50,000 rupees limit. Some even have 1 lakh, I mean, 100,000 rupees limit. So it depends on bank to bank. We have what is known as UPI. So it is, we use that, and that drives the limit on how much we can use. Now I'm going to demonstrate a couple of UK banking apps. So the first I'm going to demonstrate is from a a fairly traditional UK bank. Uh, If you're a UK resident, you might have banked with them as a child and collected their family of piggy banks. It's NatWest. Hello, everyone. I'm Ed Green. And in this demonstration, I'm going to show you the app for one of our UK banks, and that is NatWest, uh, short for National Westminster Bank part of the Royal Bank of Scotland group. It's not my primary bank account, uh, but it has some interesting functionality, which I'm going to show you. And uh, it'll link to another demo I'm going to do of one of our other banking apps, which is my default app uh, for banking. I'm going to open the NatWest Bank first. Metal Bank, NatWest. 
Enter passcode to NatWest. Enter passcode. System UI. Tap the cancel authentication button. Now it's asking for a passcode. I could do that, but also um, I can log in with my fingerprint. Authenticated. NatWest. Enter passcode showing keyboard. Evening, Edward. View menu button. So I'm logged in now. And on this screen, it's it's the home screen, it'll show me my account list. I just have one account uh, with balance. And, and it quite often pops up little messages. It thinks I ought to see other products I might like, uh, security tips, and all the rest of it. And there are some buttons on the screen, some of which are associated with my accounts. And I'm going to just have a look at some of these, and then we might uh, uh, look at uh, some of the functionality. At the bottom, we also have five Five tabs, so I'll start with those. Selected home tab out of list. There's the home tab. Help tab. Spending tab. Get cash tab and list. Apply tab out those, of list. Those are the five tabs. Um, and then the buttons on the screen. Pay button. Double tap to activate. So that would be a pay and transfer button. Button loyalty cards. My loyalty cards. View all my loyalty cards. Balance zero pounds. Cards added. Double tap to activate. Double tap and hold the long press. So this will let you add loyalty cards into the app. If it's helpful to you, for you to have those in your bank app, you can put them here. Unlabeled button. Accounts with other banks. Double tap and hold the long press. You can also set up accounts with other banks. That's called account aggregation uh, in the UK. There are various reasons you might want to do that. Um, from a blindness perspective, banking apps have their quirks. They're not all as accessible as each other. So if you find an app you particularly like, then it might benefit you to put all your other accounts from other banks into that app because it makes it easier to use. It will give uh, your bank, of course, the bank whose app you're putting the other accounts into, greater information about your spending habits. You may be happy about that. It means they can better target you. But it also means that they can perform more accurate assessments when you apply for that particular bank's other products. So uh, there are benefits. Uh, convenience is, is the general one, obviously the, the non-blindness specific one, but bear in mind that you are giving one bank quite a lot of information. Not all banks participate in account aggregation. Uh, the other app I'm going to demonstrate does not, um, so I can't add that uh, banking uh, uh, bank account into this NatWest app. So I think that's all I'm going to show you on uh, this screen. If I double tap my account, um, I get various options. My transactions. Double tap to activate. I can see a list of my most recent transactions. Payments. Double tap to activate. I can see and make payments. Manage my card and Google Pay. Double tap to activate. I could manage my card. Deposit a check. List. New. Disabled. And list. Direct debits. Out of list. Synchronize. Standing orders. Double tap to activate. And I can see my direct debits and standing orders. Documents. Double tap to activate. So uh, those are all pretty self-explanatory. I am going to go back then to manage my card and Google Pay. And I'm going to see what we have in here. Manage my card and Google Pay. Back button. Manage my card and Google Multi-page view. Page. Debit. Unlabeled. Text. Unlabeled. Button. Card freeze. Unlabeled. Button. Double, you can currently use your card as normal. Off, switch. Card payment controls. Lost, stolen or replaced card. Pin services. Going abroad. So I have various options in there. Some of the buttons are enabled, but the uh, text next to the buttons helps as a handy guide. So in here, I could freeze my card or I could report it uh, lost and stolen, uh, or lost or stolen. So quite useful. So we're going to make a payment now. Payments. Make a payment. Double tap to activate. That's the option we want. But I'm going to see what else we've got in here. Pay. Ask for payment. List. Double tap to activate. Pay. Uh, pay me. That should be. But they've written it as one word. New. Disabled. And list. Pay your contacts. Out of list. And I could pay my contacts. So let's go and make this payment. New. Disabled. Pay. Ask for payment. Make a payment. Greeny. Make a payment. Payments. Back button. Payments. From. Greeny. Select two. 
The from field is correct. Uh, it's the only account I have with NatWest. Choose who to pay or pay someone new button. Choose who to pay. Back button. Double tap uh, to activate. The person I want to pay is me. I'm going to double tap. Limit applies. To pay more than the daily limit of £1,000, please register for biometric approval. Use your biometrics to add an extra layer of security to your accounts. Out of list. I don't want to do that. Register. But not now. Button. Payments. Back. Button. Payments. From. Greeny. So to. Edward Green Met. Reference colon pay. Amount. I don't need to change the reference. Enter amount. Double tap to activate. Double tap and hold the long so. press. Labels available. Use swipe up then right to view. Showing number keyboard. I'll pay myself ten pounds. One. One. Nine. Zero. Zero. Done. Double tap to activate. Send now. Disabled. Keyboard hidden. Review payment button. Double tap to activate. So this is the review payment button. Please wait. Zero percent. Progress bar. Check and confirm. Back button. Double check and confirm. Nearly there. You can now review and make your payment. Making a payment of £10 from account Greeny. Account balance after payment. Make payment button. Double tap to activate. So... Here's the make payment button. I'm going to double tap this. Making a payment. 0% progress bar. Confirmation. Close button. Double tap to add confirmation. Payment sent. Your payment of £10 to Edward Green Metro has been successfully made. View receipt button. View transaction button. Done button. And that's all done. The payment's made. The other thing I'll show you about NatWest is their get cash option. So... This is if you've forgotten your bank card but need to get hold of cash for whatever reason. You can uh, do this and have a code generated that you key in to an eligible cash machine. Get cash. Tab. Get cash. Get cash. Back. Button. Get cash. How much do you want to withdraw? Unlabeled. Text. Ten pounds. Labels available. Use swipe up then right to view. Unlabeled. Button. Disabled. Ten pounds. Double. Unlabeled. Button. Text. Plus. Double tap to activate. Labels available. Use swipe up then right to view. So not brilliantly accessible, but this next button, this button we're on now with the plus on it, is going to increase this amount. I'm going to double tap it and show you by swiping left. £20. There you go. That's gone up to £20. Unlabeled. Button. Double tap to activate. Labels available. Use swipe up then right to view. And the button to the left of the uh, figure will decrease it. I'll double tap it and swipe right. £10. There you go. Double tap to activate. Back to ten pounds. Unlabeled. Plus, what is get cash? Double when you get your code. Don't be scammed. You'll likely lose your money if you share the code. Nobody from the bank or any trusted organization will ever ask you for it. From Greeny, create cash code button. Double tap to activate. And beyond various bank details, such as account number to check it was coming out of the right one, here is the create cash code button. Uh, I think it's going to be valid for three hours. It's not going to take any money out, so I will create the code. Please wait. Zero percent. Progress bar. Get cash. Back button. Get cash. Your £10 cash code. Reveal code. Double share. Cancel code. Nearest cash machine. Allow access to your location button. How to use your code. 1. Go to any NatWest or Tesco cash machine. 2. Press enter on the cash machine. 3. Follow the on-screen instructions for emergency cash. So there we are. Um, it isn't just NatWest, it's Tesco machines as well. So you could do this, you could reveal your code, and then you could go and use the cash machine. That's all I want to show you about the NatWest app. Next, I'm going to demonstrate uh, an app from a Challenger UK bank. It is a high street bank, but it is Metro Bank. I'm Ed Green, and I'm back with another demo of a UK banking app, this time Metro Bank. Metro Bank's one of our newer uh, banks. It's not an online-only bank. It is a bricks-and-mortar bank, but it only has 30 or so branches, predominantly in the southeast of England. 
This is my default uh, bank, my, my primary bank. I like it because they're open seven days a week and they're open quite late as well, or at least they used to be pre-COVID weekdays, they were open eight till eight and they're only closed on Christmas Day, New Year's Day and Easter Sunday. So it's a bank that is actually convenient to visit. You can also get cards printed in store when you open an account and if you're unfortunate enough to lose a card. If your card's about to expire, you can also go and get it printed uh, same day without having to wait for it to arrive uh, through the post. So quite a convenient bank. I'm going to open up the Metro Bank app. System UI. Tap to cancel authentication button. Double tap to activate. As with the NatWest app, I can log in with my fingerprint. Authenticated. Please wait. Metro Bank. Unlabeled button. Double tap to activate. Labels available. Use swipe up then right to view. And we're on the main screen of the app now, the home screen. This has the various accounts listed with a couple of buttons to manage uh, the account activity. Now, these buttons vary depending on the sort of account it is. If it's a current account, if it's a child's account, we have one of those in there, and if it's a credit card. Uh, along the bottom of the app, uh, we have Transaction approvals out of list. Double tap to activate. Transaction approvals. Now, this is worth talking about because in the UK, um, protections have recently been introduced when online payments are being made to clamp down on fraud. And your card issue will often require you to approve a transaction. Now, they might do this by sending you a text message with a verification code that you need to enter into your, uh, your browser. Or they might do it through an in-app notification. Uh, and if you miss it, transaction approvals will be where you go to approve uh, the transaction you want to make. Home. Double tap to activate. Home is where we are at the minute. The account list, as I said. Pay and transfer. Double tap to act insights. Double tap to activate. Pay and transfer is pretty self-explanatory. Insights. Double tap to activate. Insights will tell you about your spending patterns, the percentage of spend you spent on groceries, whether spend with a particular retailer or a regular payment is higher than normal. So interesting, interesting place to go and have a look. And you can rate each of the insights you receive as to how helpful it was on a scale of one to five. Products and services. Double tap to activate. There you go if you want a loan or a mortgage. And that's that. So I'm going to take a quick look at the account screen uh, without giving away too much uh, sensitive information so you can see what we have. Manage card. Double tap to activate. Regular payments. Share account details. Button. Double tap to activate. So those are the three options associated with my current account. Share account details is interesting. If you want to send your bank details exactly as they should be entered, perhaps to someone who owes you a payment, you can go in here and copy those details exactly as Metro Bank would have you enter them. And you can share it via an app. Obviously, don't do this unless you need to actually get a payment from someone. Uh, I think, But I think it's really handy rather than you know trying to remember what your name is exactly as it appears in your account and all that jazz, having having that there uh, is useful Damn. so the second account i have is a child account and the only option i have here is to pay into it which makes sense there's no card attached to it manage card make a payment transaction approvals out of list make a payment and list double tap to activate and finally with my credit card i can make a payment if i go into my account screen to my current account january transaction list Double tap to activate. Double tap and hold the long press. I will have uh, a list of transactions. It's not like uh, the NatWest app where you have a series of options. We're straight into our transactions. We do have an account actions menu in the bottom right hand corner, which I will just double click on. Account actions menu button out of list. Account actions. Close button. Make a transfer and list. Double tap to activate. That close button closes your actions menu, not your account, by the way, for the avoidance of doubt. So we've got the transfer. Make a payment. Dup make an international payment. Manage payments. Search transactions. View account details. Temporarily block card. Cancel lost slash stolen card. 
So all sorts of useful things in here uh, pertaining to card management. We can make an international payment. We can make a payment. That's what we did on the NatWest app. We'll go back and do that. We'll send, we'll send NatWest its money back. Make a payment. Metro Bank. Navigate up. Button out of list. Double tap to activate. So let's see how well this works on Metro. Payment. From. So the account is set correctly. Existing payee. Double tap to create new payee. Amount to pay. So, do we want to create an existing pay, uh, uh, pay an existing pay, or create a new pay? Create new pay. Existing pay. We'll pay an existing pay. Payees. Navigate back. Payees. Create new pay. Button. Search payees. Edit box. And we could create a new pay from here if we wanted to. Edward Green. Double tap to activate. This is me. Metro Bank. Navigate up. Button. Out of payment. From. To. Edward Green. Amount to pay. Amount. Edit box. Double tap to edit text. Double tap and hold to long press. Editing options available. You swipe up then right to view. So I'll put the amount in. Pound currency sign. Showing number keyboard. Board. Two. One. One. Zero. Zero. Next. Double tap to activate. Editing. Payment. Edit box. Reference. Double tap and hold. Ten pounds. Edit. Amount to pay. Ten pounds. Edit box. Amount. That's right. Double tap to edit. Editing. Payment. Information about reference. But unlabeled. Double pay now. Edit box. Date. Double tap to edit tech. Make payment. Button. Double tap to activate. I don't want the payment to go out at a later date, so I can just click make payment. English. UK. Q-W-E-R-T-Y. Keyboard hidden. Confirm payment. You are about to make the following payment of. Ten pounds. From. To. Edward Green. Payment. Confirm. Button. Double tap to activate. Confirm is what we want. Please wait. Metro Bank. Payment successful. And there you have it. That is uh, making payments in the Metro Bank. Very, very similar. Um, the odd unlabeled button, but nothing insurmountable. Perfectly accessible. Some handy uh, options for managing your card and, and, and making payments. But um, aside from the cash uh, sending option, equivalent functionality to NatWest if, if, a slightly different, if a slightly different layout. So that was the Metro app. If you're in the UK, I think it is worth installing the app from your bank because there's increasing security around approving online transactions. Uh, there are other ways to do it if you don't have your bank's app installed. You can probably get a text message sent. But increasingly, you are being asked to approve an online transaction on a second device. And the easiest way by far to do this is via a notification on your uh, banking app. This is to cut down on fraud. I think the banks are pushing for it because obviously they're having to, they're having to refund all these fraudulent transactions. So the more they can get the customer to take responsibility for security, the happier they will be. Do you use banking apps, Fee? I do. Um, I use the Barclays app. How's but that? It's good, but I can't comment on the Android one because I have my foot in both camps. And the reason I use it on my uh, other phone, my iPhone, is because um, that also allows me to do things with um, Apple Pay and stuff like that. And I really couldn't be bothered to set it up on Android as well. And also, I don't know if you can set up your bank app on more than one phone. I've never tried, but it was kind of a bit of a headache. When you first set it up, the amount of stuff they want you to type in and do is um, quite annoying. So you only have to do it once, but I didn't want to do it again on the phone when I got my Android phone. So I didn't. Um, but yeah, it's really good. And something I'd say that's really good about having your uh, bank app on your phone is you can check your balance any time, um, which may or may not be a good thing, um, depending on how depressing it is and how much money you've spent. Um, but also you can if someone sends you a transfer, you can confirm to them that, yes, you've received it or you haven't. You know, it's. Or if you're waiting for money back from a shop or something, you know, when you've gone back for a refund of something, uh, you, you can see when that's arrived and you can have notifications of when you get paid money or 
or when payments you make leave your account um, if you turn on the notifications, certainly on my iPhone. And I, I don't see why that would be different on the Android phones. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, um, I love that. I love being able to use that. It does mean I keep, can keep more of an eye on my finances. I don't have to go out and find a cash point. And I don't have to phone up and type in loads of numbers um, on a touch screen, which it's doable, but it's kind of annoying. Um, and I can open the app with my fingerprint, although occasionally it asks me to type in two digits of my passcode. Quite often it'll allow me in with my fingerprint. So that's really easy and hassle free. So that's nice. Yeah, I think I, I agree. They're really annoying to set up. I think I think you can do it on on two devices if you want to, but it, yeah, it is a pain that initial setup. Well, one of the things I will say as well is that in, on a lot of Android phones, it is fingerprint ID only. Fa- the face ID on many phones isn't secure enough. So, uh, if you want biometrics, it's going to be fingerprint for your banking apps on on, on quite a few uh, Android phones. Austin, do you have a banking app or is it uh, is it is it in branch for you? Yeah, in India we have lots of every bank has the app and uh, it's not in branch. But I re- really remember those days, you know, when we, we had any problem, we required any banking to be done. We had to go to the bank and the manager would make us sit in the cabin and give us a cup of tea and we would discuss everything with him. But now everything is done online. So, yeah, so, so his bank has app. the app. Yeah, you're using an app then. No, oh, that's good. Yeah, but it's not accessible <laughs> as usual. It's not. Oh no, it's not accessible. So what do you do? So I have to use Google Pay and PayPal and Amazon Pay and all those things. Well, also there are a lot of limitations in the rules. Uh, like supposing you cannot sign your checks and documents, you use your thumb impression you cannot get certain features like you cannot get a single account you cannot get an atm card if you have a joint account and even the person who is the second person on your account is signing with a pen still they will not give you the atm card unless the second person becomes the first person on the account and you become the second person then they may give you an atm Certain banks have different rules. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, Some years back, although this is not referring to our episode, ATMs were also not accessible, but now 99% of the ATMs have some form of accessibility, either Braille enabled or TalkBack or some, not TalkBack, but they are own accessible software. So there are limitations here and uh, things are still offline they're getting slowly online this covid pandemic has bought a lot of things online so that is one good thing for us the pandemic has a lot of bad things but it has also done some things for us that it has bought more and more things and features online that used to be offline so that is one thing that we need to bring the good thing out of the pandemic no, and that's a shame. Uh, UK banking apps haven't always been accessible, to be fair, and occasionally some of them some of them break. But uh, sounds like Fee and I have alighted on ones uh, which are working working well. And if you live here in the states, uh, these are the banking apps that I have, and I know they are accessible. The Wells Fargo Bank is, uh, US Bank is, Chess and Bank of America. All these are accessible. And like Fee says, you know, I like that idea that, you know, you get a notification when you get your direct deposit in, or I set mine to send me a notification if I fall below X amount on my account. And I really like that because then I know it's either I need to go do some transfers or whatever. So I really like that. Or stop spending money. Oh dear. Well, he, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't spend money. He buys <laughs> junk phones from Fisher Price. So. Uh, and, and and by the That's way, it. let me make a correction here. The Google Four, the Pixel Four rather, supports my bank face unlock id because that's the only one it has and it works flawlessly. And the good thing is that I could all of my phones have 
my banking apps on it and it doesn't matter which one I use. Now we move on to our spotlight section. And this week, Warren talks to Sylvia Van Oost, the developer of the Race to Answer app. I would like to welcome our friend Sylvia Van to the podcast. And Sylvia, today we're talking about a very important app that I stumbled upon, and that is the Race to Answer. And out of the blue, I was minding my business, so they say, and somehow on the Play Store, I ran into your app and knowing that this app is something that blind people would like to use and not only blind people, but I know over and over again on our mailing lists, people have been talking about an app that they would simply be able to put the phone to their ear and the phone should be answered without them doing anything else. But before we talk about that, I would like you to tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll talk about Race to Answer. Um, yeah, well, hi, I'm uh, Sylvie van Os. I, uh, I live in the Netherlands. Um, I work as a system Linux engineer, so Linux system administrator uh, at a Dutch consultancy company. And in my spare time, I do a lot of uh, random programming code, uh, a lot of Android these days. Yeah, that's that's pretty much me. Great. So when did you start programming for Android? I mean, I understand that this is more or less like a hobby for you, but then you did something that a lot of people like. And so uh, what motivated you to do something for Android? Um, Well, I I bought something called an input stick, and it allows you to, um, you know, put a sort of USB stick into your PC and share text from your phone. And I kind of didn't really like the official app. So I was just like, let's let's see if it's possible to, to you know, make my own thing. And I figured like, hey, this is a good good moment to try to learn something new. And um, that's that's where I started with Android. It's that was a really simple app. Um, and yeah, after after I kind of got into it, it was just like my my dad got a new phone and he was like, well, it's a kind of an expensive Fairphone, so I don't want to risk like getting paint over it. So yeah. I don't want to have to touch the screen with my finger. So I was like, maybe I can solve this now. I know a bit of Android, and that's race to answer. And kind of, I kind of fell into it, and it's just it, it's just fun to do Android most of the time. Your story sounds very familiar because we have a similar app that was developed as a result of someone developing an app for their dad and that has to do with an app called voxmate and which is also from a european background there in estonia and so you develop something for your dad and now it's become a blessing to a lot of us and so i find it really intriguing that you know simple apps sometimes come as a result of someone trying to solve a problem for a family member or someone trying to solve a problem because of his or her own need because of a native app is not doing what they want or some app that is there is not doing exactly what they want. So that gave birth to um, Race to Answer. Now, did you ever know that blind people could use uh, smartphones? Have you ever run into blind people using any smartphones at all? Uh, well. Actually, when I uh, when I was still studying uh, back then, I was studying software development at a university for applied sciences. Uh, before I decided to instead go into Linux, and, and one of the projects was actually um, some indoor navigation app we had to build for for um, for blind people. Um, it used kind of Bluetooth beacons, like placed all over the facility. Um, but everyone there was actually using uh, iOS. There was only a single Android user because um, from what I heard from those people there, the, a lot of people just did not find TalkBack to work well enough. So I kind of always expected the vast majority of blind users would probably uh, be iPhone users, not Android users. So it did slightly surprise me to find such a big active Android group. Very interesting. Of course, that's what happens. A lot of times people think 
uh, that blind people don't use Android or what has happened is that a lot of uh, the trainers have said Android is not usable or not friendly to the blind. And so as a result of that, a lot of blind people wind up um, struggling to get an iPhone because they are afraid to try Android because the experts have indicated that Android is not blind friendly. And so it's not surprising to hear what you are saying because that is typical of what's happening. But then, of course, you now engaged with us and most especially on our Telegram group and you can see that we have a lot of active blind users who use Android. Now, the story is an interesting one because you came across us our channel, the Blind Android Users YouTube channel. That's where you saw my demo of the race to answer in our episode 56. Now, how did you come about that? It's really interesting because that's how you were able to join us on our Telegram group. Here I was planning on writing you and asking you, say, hey, you know, uh, Self, could you do something else? We know this is great, but we would love to see if you could make it to where it if one takes it away from their ear, it could go to the speaker or something like that. Tell us that story as to how you came across the Blind Android Users channel on YouTube. Uh, yeah, so I, I have this thing where just every now and then, I just Google my own projects just to see if anyone has like done anything interesting, if uh, if anyone has like written a review or, or shared their, their opinions, good or bad, so I can uh, help and improve it. And uh, well, in my last time that I just Googled the app, I came across um, yeah the Blind Android Users channel. I believe it was like like a day after you posted the video. So the timing was extremely interesting. But <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. So I, I just had to check it out. I just had to see like, hey, how well does it work? Because the way you were navigating it, it sounded really, really unfriendly. Like, like it was really hard to find all the UI elements. Um, but I, I learned since joining your group that um, it seems to be that you just prefer to use touch to explore, uh, and that the regular like swiping left, right for the next and previous item wasn't that broken. There were some issues which the members of the group pointed out, which was amazing. So I've been able to already release an update that fixes some accessibility issues. Um, but yeah, it, it's just, I just had to know more because it sounded really cool. That was a perfect timing and what a coincidence that was that here I was, I did a review of the app and then you are Googling it to see if anyone has done any reviews and there it was. So there's an interesting part of the app that I am wondering if it is doable. In other words, blind people, sometimes when we call businesses like banks or companies and things like that, and one comes across the part that says, hey, enter your PIN or, you know, make a choice from the following and things like that. Now, in order for us to be able to do that, two things need to happen. Number one, we have to either find the speaker mode, tap on it and put our phone in the speaker mode and activate the keypad. Or number two, have a headset to where we'll be able to find that speaker mode and tap on the dial pad and be able to interact with the keypad. Now, my question is, do you think that maybe sometime in the future down the line, maybe it would be possible for you to kind of figure a way of integrating the ability to uh, make the call goes back to the speaker phone once one takes away that phone from his or her ear? Uh, I, I have actually been, been like doing some quick research on that, and it does seem like Android allows apps to, uh, to, and to change a call mode to speaker mode. So it sounds like it is technically possible. I, I will have to um, research a bit more, experiment a bit more, um, but I'm definitely going to look into it because I've heard a lot of people request this feature and it would be cool to be able to help uh, help a lot of people at once. 
That would be perfect. I think that's going to be a lot of blessing to a lot of people because that's an issue, a very big issue, that people are always on a hunt for an app that would do that. But if this is possible down the line, and if you research it and integrate that into Race to Answer, that would be wonderful. Now, I know you do have another app before we bring this to a close. So um, there's an app that you have also created. And I call it the Arabian Girl because it has like a beautiful Arabian name and that's called Katima. Could you talk about Katima? Um, yeah, Katima uh, is, is short for Card and Ticket Manager. Um, and it's an app to, to store loyalty cards in. So I, I really care about open source apps because it's really nice of the freedom to make changes. And I think it's, it allows um, more people to like add their own needs to apps, even if the original developers don't care for it. Um, and while I was looking for that, I found an app by uh, by an American named Brandon Archer. It was called Loyalty Card Keychain, uh, and it did it did everything I wanted, but I was I was missing a few features here and there. Um, so I started contributing those back, um, but at a certain point. Uh, Brenda didn't really have the time anymore to keep working on it. Uh, so I I communicated with him and we decided that it would be better if I would branch it off into a new app. Um, but it was actually the whole base of Katima is uh, is the loyalty card keychain app from Brandon Archer. Uh, Katima is simply a continuation with, with features added that I wanted to add for myself. Now, the beautiful thing about this, though, is that you have become aware of us, or aware of blind people with the need for accessibility. I've never tried uh, Brian's uh, app, so I have no clue as to how accessible or inaccessible it is. And so now that you are now part of that, and even though you are not very familiar with accessibility until now that you come to know us blind people, you look at things differently. In other words, you're looking at apps from a different viewpoint, creating apps with uh, accessibility in mind. And I think it's a blessing that you actually have come to be part of this and now um, merging this to becoming Katima. And that's going to be a blessing to us because if we do have a problem with the accessibility of the app, you are going to be there to help us, you know, straighten that out. So I am so thankful that you have come into this and it's such a perfect timing. And I've heard the story again and again, how it is that certain developers created apps or, you know, modify some other apps or recreate some other apps because it's not doing exactly what they wanted. I mean, they love everything about the app, but there are certain things that the app kind of falls short of. And so they have these other ideas and then we wind up having a great app. And this would be the story with uh, Katima. So we are looking forward to having a great app uh, experience with this. And I'm going to be installing Katima myself i just use gpay and it would be nice to have something else besides uh, gpay and so with you doing this i think it's a blessing to all of us and so to close up for today do you have any other thing to say before we bring this to a close i know we really thank you for taking your time to come up and talk with us here at blind android users podcast um, well, I, I first of all, I want to uh, thank your whole community as well. It's been amazingly helpful in helping me understand TalkBack better so that I could actually uh, um, implement these things. Because um, while uh, during my education, Android was mentioned a bit, the word TalkBack had not come up a single time, sadly. The whole documentation regarding accessibility tooling is hard to find if you're if you're new to accessibility in general. Um, but yeah, I, I have been really grateful for all the help of your community, and uh, I, I hope that we can keep working together to uh, to help make everything more accessible. Thank you so much for doing that, and hopefully, you know, maybe we'll may we may have another app. You know, from you, who knows? See, I'm all about simplistic apps. I really like simple apps that, you know, make things easy. And 
Race to Answer is absolutely one of those beautiful, simple apps that I really adore. So thank you so much for uh, developing both Race to Answer and Katima. Yeah, um, and thank, uh, thank you uh, for having me. <laughs> thank you so much. And those of you who are members of the Blind Android Users Telegram group may have seen Sylvia contributing to that, which I think is great. Warren, what were your, what were your takeaways from that interview? It's a great interview, and I'm really excited about this race to answer because a lot of uh, blind people sometimes have difficulty. Some, most especially newcomers to Android, have difficulty answering their phones. And so just having this app and all that it takes is for you to put the phone up against your ear and your phone call is answered. And so this is a beautiful thing, and I think it's something that needs to be told that we have another a way of answering calls if you don't want to use your fingers to swipe up or find and tap on the answer or, you know, double tap or whatever. So we have a beautiful way of answering phone calls. I'm wondering, though, because when I answer the phone, I, I press the up volume key. Is that just Samsung? Does that only work on Yeah, that's Samsung. Yeah, uh, that's, that's why Samsung. other people yeah. don't, don't do that then. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's oh, a dexterity okay. thing, really. It's not a screen reader thing. It's handy, though. But no, it's a great app. Do, do check it out uh, on, on the Play Store. Link, obviously, in the show notes. And now we bring you our app of the week, and it's our regular contributor, uh, Kareen Kiwan. Thank you, Kareen, for sending this through. Your demos are always popular and get a lot of hits, especially on YouTube. And this week, Kareen demonstrates the ADB app control. Hi. If you want to use ADB to deal with applications on your phone, but you are not familiar with ADB commands, this tool is for you. This is my demonstration of some of the features in the ADB app control, a tool that uses a graphical interface instead of commands. I'm using MVDA on Windows. Um, if you use the software on Windows 10 and above, you are not required to install additional drivers, but if you are on previous versions of Windows, the app should guide you in the process of the additional driver installation for ADB to work properly. Now, um, if you when you connect the phone for the first time, the tool should should ask you to uh, install the companion app on the phone. This app is not required for the tool to work, but it will let it display more information, like the displaying of the app names instead of just displaying the package names of the applications. Of course, you need to enable USB debugging using developer options on your phone. I will not go into steps here. And uh, let's launch the app, the, the tool. Now I will connect my phone using USB cable. Charging started, battery level is 53. New Allow USB debugging. Play. Allow USB debugging. The computer's RSA key fingerprint is 51D. Checkbox unchecked. Always allow from this computer. I can check this. Cancel. Allow. And I have the allow. Passer. Now it will load. If you face connection issues, usually a restart of the phone should solve Warning. the problem. Add BAP control 1.7.3. Okay, I will move with the tab key. Enable network debugging button. Here I have the network debugging, but I didn't use it before. Uh, I usually use, or I always use USB. And um, here I have a dialog. If, to read it, I should use screen review mode on NVDA. Let's see. And get access to the extended version of the program with new cool and useful functions. To say thank you and inspire new ideas. Okay, so it's asking me if I want to use the extended version, which is uh, a version that adds additional features, and it's a way to support the project. I will cancel it for now. Cancel button. Add BAP control. Now I will move the tab. Get help button. Open programs folder button. Check for updates button. Change language button. Support the project. B button. Edit selected search. X button. Button. Loading button. Tab control. Applications. I'm in the Applications tab. I will move with tab again. Create table. This is the table no of charging. the applications that I have on my phone. Row one row. Applications.
Application name row 1, selected. Row 2 row. Application name row 2, 3 button navigate. Of course, I'm moving with the down arrow. Row 3 row. Application name row 3, Ozzy serve. Row, row, row 6 row. Application name row 6, accessibility selected. Okay, let's read the package name of this. I will move with the right arrow. Package row 6 comp.samsung.accessibility selected. Okay, so uh, now I will move the tab again. All radio button checked. I have the filtering. If I move the down arrow here, I will be changing the filter to system apps, then to user installed apps, then to disabled, then to backed up apps if I want to restore any of them. So I will just move directly with the up arrow to go to the restoration. Add BAP control 1.7.3 unavailable. I will alt tab to read. OK button. Let's read it with screen review mode again. Recovery. Important. S select the ones you need and click. This list contains deleted system applications. Select the ones you need and click restore. If successful, the application will appear in the main list. Important. Android version 7 and below do not support. Recovery. Add BAP control 1.7. Okay, so it's very important to backup applications before uninstalling them because maybe uninstalling an app just led to issues with uh, another applications or with the system or you just want to change your mind and use the app again so for that reason this is very important now i'll see what i have deleted radio grid table row zero row Application name row zero Bixby routine selected. Okay, I have the Bixby routines. Let's just uh, press the application key or shift F10. Drop down menu. Bixby routines. Here the name. Copy app name. Copy package name. Set permissions. Search inch. Restore. I will restore it. Task completed. Dialog applications restored one slash one. Okay. Okay button. So now let's move again to the all section. Deleted radio button checked. Grid table. Rose. And use the search. Applicate loading button. Exp edit, sele button. edit selected search. And search for the routines. I just pressed uh, typed R O U. X button. Let's button. See. Loading button. Tab control, grid table, all grid table, row 325 row, M row 320, row 325 system dot, application name row 325 round did not select row 47 row, application name row 47 Bixby routine not select. Here you go. If I press on the application key right here, drop the echo, disable acapella TTS voices. So what is focused actually is the acapella TTS voices. So this is an issue with screen reader with NVDA. I'm not sure if it's with other screen readers, but the focus when you are doing a search will not be on the thing that you are already, uh, that you are focusing with the arrow. So I will move to the item below the Bixby routines. Row 325 row. Application name row 325 rounded not selected. And press the application. Drop down menu. Bix disable Bixby routines. The good part that it, it's telling me the name, so I'm I'm sure what I'm dealing with. So uh, here it's the Bixby routines. I will uninstall it. Let's see before what we have. Copy app name. Copy package name. Set permissions. Search inch. Clear app data. Save. Uninstall. Disable. Bixby routine. Uninstall. Uninstall. And let's see. Attention. Dialog removing or disabling system applications may result in failure of the device. No button alt. Yes button alt. Backup dialog. Want to backup app files before uninstalling? Recommended. Yes button alt plus Y. Of course, this is the backup. I will backup. Task completed. Dialog removed applications one slash one. Okay. Okay, but so. It's removed. Um, of course, if you are not rooted, the uninstallation is not complete. It's uh, just disabling the app for the user. 
All radio, select all checkbox, not total button. Update application data, but load preset, but save preset, but auto permissions, but upload files button. Find and disable bloatware on your device button. I'm moving with the tab. I can find and disable bloatware on my device. I didn't use this before because I usually um, uninstall applications one by one using the normal method. Install button. I can install applications to my phone using this. Or telegram channel button. Enable network debug, get help button, open programs folder button, check for updates but change language. Okay, I will just uh, talk uh, finally about something which is related to commands. The app contains a console that will let you type commands if you are just more comfortable with commands. Uh, so, support the button, edit row, X button, button, loading button, tab control. I will move with control tab to change the page. Tools tab selected. The tab. Here I have the tools. I will not go into details regarding this. Uh, let's see but what we have here. Control your device screen button. Power button. Vault plus button. Vault button. Take screenshot button. Reboot button. Combo box collapse button. Button. Status screen resolute button. Video recording button. SCRCPY installed. Setting to cam button. Select the status bar icons. Samsung enable net. Get help button. Open. Check for up, change language, support button, loading, tab control, edit multi -land. Again, control tab. I'm in the edit box where I can type ADB commands. I will just test or try one, which is to launch Google's Talkback. If you are on Samsung devices running Android 11 and above, you know that it's not possible to start Google's Talkback, even if, if it's installed on your device. It will not show. It will not be shown in the accessibility services so you can enable it from here or launch it from here i will turn off commentary and i will paste the command and let's see c o com dot google dot android dot marvin dot talk back edit multi land talk back on also gain zero decibel there we go let's see talk back, talk back. Cancel. System. Text to speed. Talkback setting. Talkback. Talkback setting. Navigator. Rail. Custom. Customize gesture. Verbosity. Text. Audio. New features in talk, talkback setting. Navigator. Button. Open talkback at the Play Store. So this was my demo of the ADB app control tool. The tool is easy to use. It's nice. I like it because I don't like to deal with commands actually and. Um, but anything you, are, you do with this application is done at your own risk, of course. Thank you. Thanks, Karine. And finally, we have the next in Warren series of highlights from TalkBack. We continue now with our theme of highlights from TalkBack. In our last installment, which was installment 19, we talked about the swiping left. Today, however, we'll be talking about the one finger back and forth movement. I will be using my Pixel 5a running Android 12 and TalkBack 12.1. For speech services, I'll be using the Google Speech Services. I am on the home screen now and since my phone supports the multi-finger gestures, I will utilize the three-finger tab to activate the TalkBack menu. I will now tap once with three fingers to invoke the TalkBack menu. TalkBack menu. Actions in list. Tapping with three fingers places me in the TalkBack menu. What I'm looking for, however, is an item in this menu called TalkBack Settings. This is the second to the last item in this menu. I will therefore put my two fingers in the middle of the phone and then slowly glide up, which means I'm scrolling down toward the bottom and find and tap on that TalkBack Settings. TalkBack Settings here I go. I will tap here. Talk back settings. Navigate up. Button out of list. Tapping on talk back settings, we are now in the talk back settings. The next item that we are looking for is an item that says customize gestures. Once again, I'll put two fingers in the middle of the phone and scroll it upward, which scrolls down the page. I will now do that. 
Customize gestures. Here is my customized gestures. I will tap here. Customize gestures. Navigate up button out of list. I am now in the customization page of the gestures. The heading that we're looking for here is a heading that says one finger back and forth movement. I will now put my fingers down again in the middle of the phone and glide up, slide up, basically scrolling down the page to go find the heading that says one finger back and forth movement. I will do that now. Showing items 3 to 12 of 54. One finger back and forth heading. Here is my one finger back and forth heading. The first item below this that we'll be looking at is the up and down that moves me to the previous item. Swipe up and down, previous reading control. In other words, if I swipe up and down in one fluid movement, a movement that I oftentimes refer to as a scrubbing movement, that would move me to the previous granularity. So, for example, if I'm sitting on the line granularity and I want to go back to the previous granularity, which would be paragraph or word granularity, then I'll swipe up and down to change or move to that next granularity. I will go through this circle so that you see what I'm talking about. I'll now swipe up and down words. It says word. Now, if I want to go back to the previous one, I will now swipe down, then up. Lines. See, that moves me back to line. So, if I want to just go through all of that until I come back around, all I have to do is up and down, up and down. It will take me through all of those. And watch what I do. I'm going to go up, down, up, down. Words. Characters. Speech rate. Windows. Links. Controls. Headings. Paragraphs. Lines. Words. I'm back to words. So you see, it takes me a longer time doing it up, down, up, down. Instead of if I want to go to the previous one, I'll just do down, up. So if I want to go back to line, I'll do down and up. Lines. And that's how it works. You now know how to go about changing your granularities using the back and forth movement. Of course, you can always change these things to something else that you prefer. You do not have to use this up and down if you wanted to use something like left and right instead. Of course, you could go change that and reassign these things to a left and right one fluid movement or scrubbing movement for changing of these granularities. And that's it about the one finger back and forth in changing our granularity. And that brings us to the end of a very busy episode 58. Austin, how can people get hold of us? To get hold of us, people can visit us on blindandroidusers.com. If they have any questions or comments or feedback, they want to submit any demos, any recording or want to come live on the podcast, they can send an email to contact us at blindandroidusers.com, subscribe to our mailing list, Blind Android Users, plus subscribe at groups.io. The links for the Telegram group, YouTube channel, and Clubhouse will be in the show notes. Thanks very much, Austin. And that's it from us this week. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great weekend. And that has been another episode of the Blind Android Users Podcast. As always, we appreciate hearing from you. You send those email messages to contact us at blindandroidusers.com. For those My Android Journey stories, we encourage you to send those to myandroidjourney at blindandroidusers.com. Until we see you in our next episode, you have a wonderful day.